Moi, je dirais, il y a assez, mais... Easy, Fred, easy, easy, easy. Easy. Même ouvert, c'est OK. Hein. Cut. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Les Ligne un peu là. 14 pieds. Derrière, c'est bien. Keep your feet to right. Ligne, ça va, ligne, ça va. pour toi, tu t'as cassé un peu la, la line. Ligne bien. Un peu de place. Un petit peu de place, Sven. Poil de place. Fini, fini. Fini, fini, fini. Faut vraiment que ça curle beaucoup. Ouais, ouais, ouais. Tout le long, tout le long, Val, continue, continue, allez, continue. Allez, allez, encore, parfait. Continue, Val, continue, encore, continue, encore, continue, encore. continue. Yep, 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 yep. Ça commence à straighten up yeah. un peu, hein, je pense. Ouais, exactement. Ouais. 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 Mais les, les premières, elles ont gardé vraiment fort, je trouve. Ouais. Greasing fast. everyone in the, the other stream is making their way over to join us. We are here in the final day of the first Adelboden International WCT men's tour. So Gretchen's made it across, excellent. And we're just here in the, the first end of one of our semi-finals for this weekend. Started off with 16 teams. Lean, ça va. The winners from the quarterfinals yesterday evening. No, no, let's not. Okay. And here we join them just in the middle of the first end. And in this semi-final, our featured game this morning, we are going to watch Savannah Terenzoni versus Peter de Cruz. And over on rink three, we have the other of the semi-finals, and that features Jolo Turnas from Italy versus Yannick Schwaller from Switzerland. So two cracking games out here this morning. My name is Lorna Rettig, and I will be guiding us through the games again this morning. Now, you may have noticed that here we are at the first Ado Bowden International WCT Men's Tour event. But do not adjust your set, that is indeed Savannah Terenzoni's team out there. So, what's going on there then? And the reason that we get to watch Savannah's team is the following. The first edition of this competition 
big deal for Adel Bowden Club getting the WCT stamp of approval. And then, of course, the events of the world changed a little bit. Um, there were various health restrictions, exactly. travel restrictions and whatnot. So some teams who wanted to travel, who wanted to play in the competition, were no longer able. And somewhat last minute, the competition organisers thought, oh, golly, who could we find a, a world-class team to be the 16th team the competition? That's a good competition for us, we will play. And I know there's a lot of support for Sylvana's team out there. I think everyone appreciates that it took good courage to say yes and put themselves out there on this stage against all the men's teams. And they're really vindicating that decision. Here we are in the semi-final. They're unbeaten since the very first morning of Friday morning at 8 o'clock. You may have joined us for that game. That was against Yannick Schwaller, who's over on the other sheet. So not a, a dummy team at all there. And they only lost that on the very last shot. So Sylvana's team, they are the current world ladies champions. Really vindicating that decision to play here. Team. We'll say hello to the teams in just a second. We've got there from Alina Petz. Thank you, Michaela, for alerting us to the audio balance, hopefully that's a little bit better now. I think, yeah, there will be two live games out there this morning. Big deal for all four of these teams. Great shot there from Alina Petz, that's really causing Peter de Cruz to have a look at things now. Lots of stones in play, even in this first end. That's becoming more and more common now. The game constantly evolving, constantly switching up. So nice to see Tombs joining us again. I know that you joined us for the very first game. You've been supporter and cheerleader for Tirensoni team all weekend. I think a lot of people really happy to see Tirensoni's team doing so well in this competition. Robinson in off, he's coming in off his that redstone out there. Go for the center. And he's got it. No slow start for Benoit Schwartz on Sunday morning. So that ah. red is still lying short. You can just see in the mirror ah. behind the players just above the scoreboard there. You can see, I think that red's still short, but he certainly cleared out plenty of space in the four foot Benoit Schwartz. So really nice shot for his first effort. The semi-final on Sunday morning here in Adelboden. That would definitely be quite a result for the rest of this competition in the second, third and future editions if the very first champions of this men's tour event were somehow ladies. That would be a, a cool little current fact. 
from the last shot here in this first end from Alina Pets. Looks like they're trying to sweep that for Curl. But that's a nice result for Alina Pets there. Got rid of two of those yellow counters that were piling up a little bit. So one more shot to come here. I don't think there's any sort of quintuple takeout, even for Ben Schwartz. But they are now discussing how to get that yellow into play. There you are, you can see it nicely there. That yellow is really safe. That's not going anywhere, but it's also only counting second shot just now. And they're having a good look at it to see is there maybe a double takeout available? Yeah, you see them looking at all the angles that uh, I think it's there, but it's a very flat one. But it looks like Benoit is in, in business mode already. And I think that is indeed the call. So it looks like he's going to try the really flat double there. So coming off the red just next to Peter de Cruz's brush and pinging across the forefoot there. Thank you, Peter. Showing us exactly the path he wants that to travel. And hopefully pick up two. Wowzers. So maybe there was some sort of quintuple takeout, but... Really great shot anyway from Ben Schwartz to, to pick up one. Definitely worth trying. There was not much risk to that shot. Could have picked up a nice two in the first end, but ended up being a one. And I think, yeah, Tim and Sony's team will be saying good job there. Good job, guys. They kept the crews to scoring only one point. In that first end, they had plenty of red counters hanging around. And like we said, that's typically a good result to force your opposition to give up last shot, but only scoring one. And why will De Cruz's team be? A little bit miffed that they only took one point with that last shot. And remember, that's because definitely at this level, if you have last shot, then it's typically relatively straightforward to score one. That's kind of the default. And if that happened for eight ends, you would end up with a score of four each. So if you want to win the game, you have to do something more than that default. You want to try to get more than one point with last shot or maybe try and score when you don't have last shot. And that's why De Cruz's team made a great shot to get one because they were lying one against. But yeah, they would they would rather pick up more than one point with last shot. But I don't think there's going to be a lot of chances in this game today. This is the current world champions versus the Olympic bronze medalists. I don't think we're going to see too many mistakes. Every half chance from either of these teams could be critical. This game eight ends. And if the scores are tied after eight ends, there will be a single extra end. And if somehow that extra end is blank, then it will be a sudden death last stone draw shootout to decide the winner. So uncharacteristic shot there from Valentin Tana. He's just dropped that right next to his first stone. Yeah. I'm not sure whether he was trying to come around his first stone or, or drop one a bit shorter, but it's uncharacteristic half shot from him. That gives us a nice opportunity to say hello to the teams this morning. Probably eight very familiar names to all of us. Um, Tim and Sony's team. Fourth rower is Alina Petz. Third and skip is Silvana Tirinsoni. Yep. Second thrower is Esther Neuenschwander. And this weekend, 
they have a super sub uh, lead in the form of Jenny Pernet. So Melanie Barber said their normal lead. She has an injury, and we hope that's not serious. And wish her well. But of course, they managed to pick up a, a fine sub in Jenny Perret. She has been world champion in her own right at mixed doubles with Martin Rios. And she and Martin represented Switzerland at the last Olympics in 2018, as did both of these teams, Silvana's team and Peter de Cruz's team. Both represented Switzerland at the last Olympics, so bunches of talent out there. And Jenny doing a fine job as yeah. an alternate yeah. for Melanie this weekend. She's had a really strong weekend. And Peter de Cruz's team also pretty familiar. Throwing fourth is Ben Ashford's. Third is Sven Mikkel. Second and skip is Peter de Cruz. And lead is Valentine Tanner. It's a nice shot of Esther Neuenschwander there. We've got the active cam out in the ice today, so even more choices and angles for us to watch. Esther's also had a really strong weekend, but the whole team has had a really nice weekend. Oh, that looks like a, a nice effort there. Tim and Sony's team has last shot in the second end. And traditionally, you might see teams playing towards the wings if they have last shot. But like we said, the game's changing up. And especially with the five rock free guard zone, you typically have many more shots in play. Typically, you have more guards. The guards are protected that one shot longer. It's making a big difference. And you really more see this kind of strategy. It becomes a bit of a race to the center. Someone like Jenny Perret, who's very experienced with mixed doubles. That's exactly her cup of tea. That's exactly the kind of shots she's doing all the time. The send here in the second end of the semi-final, taking on very much of a, a mixed doubles sort of a feel to it. in that game and increasingly in the traditional rules you see teams really putting stones just ahead of T, front of forefoot really trying to control the front of the house so that they can move stones around bump stones forward uh, sorry bump stones backwards but those two center guards no longer helping Tim and Sony's team They've got last shot in the second end, and it's time to remove them. Oh, really close to it for Esther to get a pair of them there. But removes one. And she's still got those two red shots, but I think Peter de Cruz is also going to start hitting and he can drive that yellow back into those reds and I have an idea he could get a pair of them here. So we tell very comfortable hitter. Look at that huge weight. This brings just about everything out and really cleans out that four foot circle. Lovely shot there from Sven Mikhail. I think it's just about the third season for Peter de Cruz's team with Sven Mikhail. Their previous third player was Alena Petz's brother, Claudio Petz. And he decided to take a pause after the Olympics. It's a pretty intensive schedule they have. And they picked up a really handy third player in Sven Michel. First shot here in the second end for the Silvana. Going for a nice easy hitting roll. 
She's definitely got a roar. I think it might be a little too much, though. Is that red going to hang on? It does. So that's definitely created a lot of space, but I think that curled a wee bit more than they were hoping. And that yellow didn't quite spring out. And the red's just hanging on at the edge there. Could become important later. But at the moment, play is still going to be more focused towards the middle. If you're just joining us, good morning and welcome to the semi-finals of the first Adelboden International WCT Men's Tour. Your eyes are not deceiving you in this first edition of the competition. Our very special guests are Silvana Terenzoni's team. The competition had a space for one more team due to various disruptions with coronavirus and travel and so on. And we're really grateful to have Silvana's team playing in this competition as our special guest 16th team and they have very much repaid the organizers faith in them they're one of the last four teams in the competition here at the semi-final stage of course they're the current ladies world champions they represented switzerland at the olympics as well up against peter de cruz's team bronze medal at the olympics both sides of the semi-final. Savannah tried to follow in that really nice shot from Sue Mikael. And she's not bad, she hasn't quite made it to the face of that yellow. So that yellow is looking quite handy now. But I think De Cruz still thinks there's maybe a bit of a danger. You can maybe see about half of the stone there and while they're having a discussion. Jenny and Esther would give us a space, then we could check over on the other semi-final. And that's being played over on sheet three between Joe Returnas from Italy and Yannick Schwala, also from Switzerland. And that was a steal in the first end for Yannick Schwala, a steal of one. They're also in their second end, and that score is 1-0 to Schwala. Not sure what the final decision was for Ben Lashworth's first shot. The more heroics was big across the house doubles at this end needed. They may be trying to neutralise the danger of that red shot. I think they're going for the spot just where Peter de Cruz is pointing. Okay. So getting yeah. kind of busy there ahead of the tee. And I think Alina and Savannah, they will be looking at if they would indeed play onto that yellow that Alina's indicating. What happens to their red? What happens to the yellow behind that? And what happens to their shooter? <laughs> Alina Pitts, she has been a skip very experienced skip and Alina is in fact a double world champion not only with Silvana's team the reigning world champions but at their very first appearance at the world championships Alina's team went all the way to the trophy and beat Jennifer Jones's team in a really close final she had to draw the pin for the win and she did it so if you need someone to play a shot to make a shot to save your life then Alina Pats is a pretty good choice. 
indeed looks like they are going to attack that yellow just played by Bemar Schwartz. I guess what they are thinking is going to happen is if they hit that yellow, the red will spring back and punch out the yellow in the forefoot and be a shooter. Should roll to our right. Let's see. Sweep it to curl, but I think it's fine. Pretty much like that. Yep. Nice shot, Alina. So, indeed, the the yellow that wasn't the forefoot that sprung out the back, that red now looks pretty nice in there at the edge of that forefoot, and they've got a dangerous red just in front of Peter de Cruz. For their last stone, so lovely shot there by ever reliable Elena Pets. Looks like we've got lots of folks tuning in. This is a matchup we very rarely would get to see, and it's great to see so much support for Sylvana's team out there. I think, as I said, people really appreciate the team having good courage and putting themselves out there. playing in this men's competition and what a performance we're getting from them. <laughs> Say hi to Stephanie in the chat as well. Who wants both teams to win. She's happy to see either team win. This has to be I think two very popular teams out there. Nice shot there from Ben Marshford. just cleaning up that danger. But Alina Pets does have a good amount of space to draw for two. This is now the last stone in the second end. Just Savannah indicating where they want this stone to end up. They just need to be a little bit careful of that front yellow that Ben Marshford just threw. But just touching the forefoot will be enough. Yeah. A good amount of space for Alina to, to make this shot. And they would be really happy to pick up a big two here in the second end. So here's what comes. The speakers wait on it to keep it nice and clean. It sounds like they're saying okay. the it's pretty good from their perspective. I think they're just keeping it clean. I think this looks great. Yeah, Peter de Cruz already signaling with his brush. Nice shot. There we are. Look at that. Exactly, T line. So lovely shots again from Alina Pets there. And a big two for Tim and Sony's team. Fist bumps all round. Well deserved. That was a really well worked end there from Sylvana's team. And after two ends, the score here in our first semi final is 2 1 to Terenzoni. Lead player for Savannah this weekend. Jenny, a previous world champion in mixed doubles and Olympic silver medalist with Martin Rios for Switzerland in mixed doubles in the Olympics. So, no trouble for Jenny drawing guards and drawing T weight towards the centre. That's exactly what she does all the time in mixed doubles. Is 
I think one of the best league players in the world, if not the best. So he won't be intimidated. He and Peter de Cruz have played together for many, many years, starting in juniors. But just dropping a wee bit short there. That's not quite here where he wanted it. Terence Zoni's team will gladly use that opportunity. And come around the pair of them. He's been a big supporter all weekend as well. And Yayu, I hope I pronounced that correctly. If you want to say hi in the chat, then feel welcome to join us here in the, the virtual club room. So a little bit of a half shot there from Jenny Perrett as well. Maybe the ice is a little bit slower and maybe a little bit frostier early on Sunday morning than the teams are used to. It's a lot of games on the weekend as well. Energy levels. Going to be going to be getting a wee bit lower maybe on this final day. There's been a lot of games up to now. See a nice little shot of Sven Mikhail from his previous team behind Valentin Tana there. Yeah, That's right. a better effort from Valentin. And you can see that the grabbing the part. forefoot. <laughs> Peter de Cruz has last shot in this third end. At the moment it's getting a bit junked up there on the centre line. And Savannah happy to use that, so asking the Australian fan to follow that stoning from Valentin Tanner. Maybe force Peter de Cruz to maybe start clearing up the middle. But this one's just coming up short as well. So indeed, maybe the ice a little bit slower today than it's been playing. These reds out front are not bad for Silvana, but <laughs> the team of De Cruz's quality, they are probably just going to okay. go ahead and use those guards first. Just try and get to the centre first. Yeah. As is indicating, yeah. let's come round the clockwise handle. Yeah. I think his concern is that if they come in the clockwise handle around that red, then it's a relatively straightforward <laughs> raise takeout to play that red guard onto a yellow behind it. So the decision is instead to stick to this counterclockwise handle and no easy way to remove stones from there. the second end <laughs> over on the other seat. I will update you as soon as they have. Maybe everyone feeling a bit more sluggish over there. Lovely wait from De Cruz. He's just hung out a little bit though. Now things getting a little bit dangerous for Terence Sony now. De Cruz has last shot. And yeah. Typically, Savannah wouldn't mind that having that guards out front, but they had a couple of stones well dropping short that they wanted to get in behind the centre yeah. guards, and I think, yeah, now she needs to do some damage limitation. Doesn't want to let too many yellows start building up the behind guards. So asking Esther Neuenschwander for a hit. So it gets a lot of stones moving, Estra. And the final result is that there are still two yellows lying in the house, but they're wide open. 
I, yeah, but I, I, I think the folks watching, it. but there are special Edge rules in place because of uh, coronavirus, just to keep everyone safe. All of the teams, uh, they've got their own special area, so they have the, the ice hall, of course, and the locker rooms and whatnot, and the rest of us, we're all staying upstairs in the club area. Just to really make sure the players aren't exposed to very many people. So we really appreciate all of the teams putting faith in the competition and travelling not only in Switzerland but from from Germany, Austria, Italy, Netherlands. And we really appreciate the teams putting themselves out there. So we do have some restrictions and one of those is also while we would normally encourage people to come to the club and come and watch some world-class curling on the weekend, at the moment we're saying please instead join us in the virtual club room online. Again, just to limit the exposure of everyone. It's not that we don't have interest in watching. That's certainly not the case, but yeah, the, the club area will be not quite so busy as usual, Heck. just because of the health situation. So those three stones are set up ever so nicely. There's no double takeout possible. And that's almost a perfect example of what some people, and including myself, I would say, would call uh, a Christmas tree. And what they mean is if you imagine a drawing of a Christmas tree, it's kind of it's like the branches sticking out and the baubles on the end, and the stones represent yep. the baubles. One, two, three, in that little kind of triangular yep. shape. Yep. And that's yep. a very safe confirmation well. for the stones. As you can see, there's no double takeout yep. possible well. and difficult to get to the inside of those stones. So I think that's about as much as Silvana could do with that shot. Those three yellows were really nicely placed. Remember De Cruz playing yellow. They have that shot in this third end. Peter de Cruz reckons they can get a hit and roll in behind that cover. They need to be a little bit careful if the stone hangs out at all. If it stays to the outside of that red, then it might punch that red back straight onto the yellow. That's what Terence Oni will be hoping for. A bit of a mistake. So Miguel also hugely experienced. Yeah, 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 going to get a roll though. And actually, he does catch that yellow on the way out, but not enough to squirt so it out the back. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely an opportunity for a tasty double. You stick a stone right in the middle of the two of those, and the pair of them will go sideways. Ich glaube nicht, weil sie werden eh hinter gehen nachher, aber nachher können wir vielleicht preisen oder das andere wäre da. Sind wir auch besser wie die zwei? It sounds like Alina might not be convinced the double's the best shot. Ich glaube, das siehst du nicht, Finn. She maybe thinks that doesn't go as nicely as from my angle. So. Yeah. Sounds like that's the decision. Like the communication. Yeah, just, just the easy double then. Yeah. Yeah. Is that easy, says Peter de Cruz. I hope he's not trying to put the ladies' team off with his chitter chatter. He's a nice man, Peter. I'm sure he's just being friendly. So let's see if life is easy at this double. Great picture of Alina yep. there. 
So no yeah. trouble for Silvana. Mm, Took a nice double there. And this is looking a lot less dangerous now. There is that one yellow tucked in behind cover, but it's quite a long way behind T. And there's space on both handles for Silvana's team. Trying to get one behind the safety guard, so much happier with these situations. These yellows were starting to build up a bit. Two nice shots from Silvana. Let's tidy that up. Nice shot from Sven. That's ahead of T, that's what they want. But definitely half of that stone visible for Alina Pads. She seems to really like the idea of coming around on the clockwise handle just with a dead draw. Sneak one in that way. We were saying last night, yeah, the your decision is always correct if you pull it off. It's only if you get a shot wrong that it was the wrong decision. But yeah, I think we need to think about doing something about this yellow. That's a dangerous one. They don't have last shot here. Four stones to come. Two for Terence Oni, two for Peter de Cruz. While they're deciding, at long last, the other semi-final, after a rather tardy 45 minutes, have finished their second end. And that was another steal of one to Schwaller, so the score after two ends in the other semi-final is 2-0 to Schwaller against Jova Turnaz's team from Italy. So two lines have so very good. It sounds like T-line weight. Is the call. They don't need to move that yellow out of play, but they do want to move it away from the front of the forefoot where it's in a dangerous spot. And they'd love to replace that yellow with their own stone at the front of the forefoot in a dangerous spot. A gentle weight here from the pets. What to do with curling? Looks like Jenny is trying to encourage it to curl a wee bit more. And she did a good job. Yeah, that's a nice shot there from Alina. You can see that yellow is still lying short, but it's now behind T. And Timothy's team could very much use that red and punch it in a bit further. So nice shot there from Alina Pets. If you're just joining us, we're at the semi final stage of the first Adelboden International WCT Men's Tour. You can see behind Peter de Cruz that we have a very special guest team here this weekend in Savannah Terenzoni's team. A space in the competition due to some cancellations from coronavirus and travel restrictions and Silvana's team very kindly said, yeah, we will play. And I know a lot of folks out there really enjoying watching Silvana's team here. We don't get to see the top ladies teams play the top men's teams very often at all. Certainly not in competition. And they're currently 2-1 ahead of Peter de Cruz after okay, two cap. ends, but getting to the business end of this third end. Yes, no sweeping yeah, 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 yeah. typically means the pass not bad. Yeah, decent effort from Ben Schwartz, but Alina Pats can maybe still see yeah, enough of that red to use it, or she's maybe finally going to play her intern draw that 
sounds like she's been <laughs> eager to play for most of the end. You can say hi to Samsung in the chat from Brazil. Gosh, I'm not sure what time it must be there. It must be very early in the morning. This match is definitely worth setting the alarm clock for. The cruise is last shot then in this third end, and again, Tirinsoni's team, they won't mind if the cruise only scores one point. And it sounds like that's exactly what they're going for. So Alina Pats is now finally getting to play her clockwise draw. There may be space to get all the way to the face of that yellow. But I think what she's aiming for is more to block Benoit Schwartz from being able to get to the face of that yellow. You can see the red that she played with her first shot on the right hand side of uh, the centre line. That's really blocking anyway in on the counterclockwise handle. And I think she's wanting to set it up pretty much the same here on the clockwise handle. So last shot here for Tirantoni. So they really like the line. Everybody out to help with the sweep. They really want this to lie second or third shot. They wanted to beat that yellow. So it comes up a little bit short, but I think it might do the job. Certainly blocks that handle for Benoit Schwartz. I think I heard Benoit Schwartz saying something was très difficile. I think what he may be trying to do is <laughs> just chip okay. that red absolutely sideways and that would bring the yellow on its left into play and then he could maybe pick up a nice two. Oui. He's not afraid of a trade oui. to see a shot is Ben Rashford's. That's exactly what he's done, Nick. Well, it was very difficult, but he does make it look easy. And good little, oh wow, so that back yellow then came into play as well. So you can see how important it was then that that final shot from Alina Peds dropped up a wee bit short. Yeah, the opportunity to bring both those yellows back into play. If, if that final shot from Alina had just gone a little bit further, Ben Schwartz would have been hitting that and not making their life any easier, or not really uh, gaining any more shots. They would still have only been lying. The one you can pay? see at this level, just a few centimeters here and there makes a big old difference. So big old score of three, almost from nothing there in the third end of the cruise. So that makes the score here after three ends. In our semi-final, that's the score is now 4-2 to Peter de Cruz. 5 Traditional kind of start in this the fourth end. The crew's putting one straight in the house. Tim it's only just ignoring that and putting up a guard. They'll be working really hard now to no try and pick up two points again in this fourth end. They had a really well worked game, really well worked end rather, in second end to pick up two and they'll be working hard to try to do that again. Up. 
Nein, ça va. 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 Nein, ja, bravo, Silvana ja. asking gut, Jenny ja. Pennett. She'll be playing just about T-weight, but she doesn't want to get to the house. What she wants to do is move that yellow off the centre line and also spin herself over to be a second corner guard over on the left there as we see it. This looks pretty nice. Does she want to catch the edge of it? She does. So it overcurls a wee touch, but that's a nice result. Yeah. She has got the red in on the wing there, and you can see that that yellow that was in the free guard zone that's just been pushed a little bit into the house, and that can be helpful. That's not necessarily a bad shot because that means that you can now hit that stone, even though this is the fifth zone coming, so the free guard zone is nearly finished anyway, but. Sometimes you'll see teams doing that. They don't mind bumping a stone into the house because that means they can remove it immediately and have to wait for the free guard zone to finish. I think Peter de Cruz is keen on just removing that red. Just caught an edge a bit. But no, he hasn't caught enough of it to move it out. It had to get a long way over the house there. And you'll not get too many mistakes out of Cruz's team. And I'm sure Savannah will gladly take that half shot. So asking Esther Neuisch van der to now draw another stone behind that corner guard. And we start setting up the end with some red pinkers hanging about. Looks like we have a Russian fan in the chat, I'm afraid. I don't speak yeah, enough Russian or any at all to be able to pronounce your name properly, but welcome. Good. Oh, that just sneaks into the house. Good job, Esther. Just roll un peu avec ça. And they've picked up the piece a bit over in the other semi-final. I think everybody yeah, was quite happy to have a easier end tactically there. So that ended up being a blank end over in the other semi-final in their third end. And that means the score remains 2-0 to Alex Schwanner playing Joe Returnas. Nice easy take out from Peter de Cruz there. Yeah. But still good options in front of T. Remember, that's always important to control that front of T area. Tinatoni now has the opportunity to make a nice hit and roll on that yellow just at the top of the forefoot and roll it behind that corner guard. Sounds like a 10 second shot they were calling. What they mean is a shot taking 10 seconds between the hog lines. So well, that sounds like a controlled takeout. So could do with a bit of help on the line there. Definitely got the roll. Looks like it's just popped out the other side, but great effort from Esther. And that's removed that yellow from the forefoot. It's only with last shot in this fourth end of an eight end game. Oh. 
if you weren't able to join two. us yesterday evening, there were four really two. exciting quarterfinals. Well, 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 yep. You will find those in the video yeah, vault yeah, yeah, of WCT TV YouTube channel. So I can tell you how the four teams got here in quarterfinal one. Yeah, so. Joe Returnas beat the young Hoosley team from Switzerland, and that was a measure in the last shot of the final end, so couldn't have been any tighter that game. The Hoosleys on their fourth game yesterday, but definitely kept their energy levels up, so whatever they're doing for their training regimen, maybe we should all be learning from that. But yeah, finally, a measure in the very last end, and Joe Returnas' team got the decision there. Our featured game yesterday, was again another corker between Yannick Schwaller and Jat van Dorp. That again went to the last shot. Van Dorp's team really difficult to beat, always play a very aggressive style. And Schwaller's team won there also in the last shot. The third quarter final was Tim and Sony in a rematch against Team Totzek from Germany. They met already this weekend. And Team Tim and Sony continued that winning form. And that was actually the the easiest yeah, of the, the quarterfinals. That finished 7-2 after seven ends. And we finally, quarterfinal four was Peter de Cruz versus Jan Hess. That also went to the way to the wire in the eighth end. De Cruz's team blanking the seventh end and all square score going into the eighth end and de Cruz picking up one for the win. So for uh, exactly really exciting games yesterday evening. And we have four teams still standing. Sven Michael going for that yeah. same shot. Everybody finding the stone, but not quite finding a roll. You can catch up on yeah, all I the scores from this competition and all of the WCT yeah, events at their website yeah, on worldcurlingtour.org. It's a new website, so make sure you update your bookmark, make sure you're in the right place, worldcurlingtour.org. And on the homepage, you'll see a little red ribbon towards the top that has the scores from the Adel Bowden event ongoing. And there on that website, worldscurlingtour.org, you will also find information on events in the men's tour, the women's tour, the mixed doubles tour, and also information on junior events and wheelchair events. So plenty of good information on that website. Obviously, the status of tournaments this year is a little bit fluid just with travel restrictions and health restrictions. Some tournaments sadly already had to be cancelled and both this tournament, yeah. as we've spoken about, and two weeks ago in Baden, yeah, both of those tournaments also affected with okay. some teams having to cancel. But step by step, we've got quite a silver lining yeah, for that particular cloud and the team that we're watching right here, the Ladies World Champions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then the Tim team filling in in this competition. So Tim and with last shot in this end. We do have that red on the left of our screen as we see it behind the guard, but I think there are at least two yellows out counting it. It could be a wee bit difficult to bring that back into play. I'm not sure what the decision was here, but that's found a pretty nice place there. 
gets rid of two of the yellows and gets a nice little roll in behind okay. cover yeah, there. Definitely space, as Ben Rashford is indicating, yeah. definitely space that right he could come in behind that corner guard and out count those two leads. But next result huh? for Savannah's team there. Surely it doesn't look like a blank end here in the fourth, not at the moment. And Savannah will realise that as well, and knowing that uh, it doesn't look like this end is going to be blanked, someone's going to have to score. And as we've said, if you want to score with Hammer, with Last Stone, then you'd much rather score two than one. One's kind of the default score with Last Stone. So Savannah will be, Sheena Lina will be thinking, okay, how are we giving ourselves a chance to okay. make two points from, from okay. here? Ça, plutôt avec la tendance uh, un peu là, pense. Not in a bad situation. They've yeah. got those two reds there quite nicely lined up uh, behind uh, the guard. That yellow's oh, totally that open. Uh, de Cruz isn't going to guard uh, it. Uh, uh, but yeah, de Cruz needs a, a second stone in here counting. So just where his brush is now, in the 8 foot, I think that's pretty much where they want this stone to end up. The winner of this game will play the winner of our other semi-final between Joe Wiltornaz and Yannick Schwaller, and the final will be at 1.30 European time today. We haven't had a chance to watch Joe return as his team this weekend. Just with one thing and another. And Joe's team always fun to watch. So that might be nice if we get to see them in a final. So Ben Marshforts does outcount both those reds, but I don't think he got fully in behind the guard. Looks like Alina can see maybe half, a third of that stone. So she's definitely got space to chase that stone in, punch it out the back. Hack. Hack wait the call. Uh, maybe able to get a nice roll from this as well and really give himself a chance to try to make two points. We're right in the middle, we're at the halfway point, the fourth end of the semi-final game. Giving it a good sweep already. Oh. It sounds like she's not around the guard after all. No, she isn't. That's a pity. Ah. Yeah, big sigh from Terence Oney's team there. So not a disaster. They still have plenty of space. But the problem is, I don't see how they are going to be able to score two now. They do have last shot, one more stone to come from De Cruz and one more stone to come from Tim and Sony's team. But I don't see any way for Tim and Sony's team to score a two with last shot in this end. Looks like Alina Pats will be making her last shot to score one point. Uh, meanwhile, De Cruz is discussing <laughs> where should they put <laughs> this yellow stone to make Alina's life as difficult as possible to score one. Looks like they want Six to put it, I think, level with the yellow in the front, eight foot in the white circle, on the other side of the centre line, so just in front of the back yellow to triangulate their yellows. I will expect that Alina Pets can get one point here, but that's exactly what they want her to do. They just want to put another stone in and give her some pressure with her final stop. Drawing against three is never easy. 
Here we are. All triangulated, and Alina points straight to the middle. Um, Silvana wonders maybe if the other handles a better idea. Seems like indeed the clockwise handle is the decision. So Alina Pads needs to be touching the forefoot with this stone. We've seen her do it already this game. But yeah, drawing against three is never comfortable. That's never an easy shot. She needs to put those three out of her mind. And just draw the forefoot as usual. The sweeper's helping it along. I think it's pretty much fine. I don't think it needs too much sweeping. And I'm just going to cover the hole to prove my point, says Elena Pet. Super shot from her under pressure. Sven is her partner there. So I think he was just saying but nice shot to her there. Tim and Zoni will probably be a wee bit disappointed. They were setting that end up nicely, but then just a couple of misses, a couple of half shots, and no opportunity to score two. That's a score of one then for Tim and Sony, and that makes the score here in our first semi final 4 3 to Peter de Cruz after four ends. That score confirmed there. Guard called immediately. There you can see if you've been keeping an eye on the hacks this weekend. The magical disappearing hacks. You can see there are two hacks behind Silvana. And it's looking very sinister. You can see there's two hacks at this end as well. And you're about to see why. It's simply that the hacks are removable. Some hacks are really fixed on the ice, but these are anchored with two little pins drilled into the ice, so you can easily take the hacks out if you're not using them. And in this game, we have both hacks at both ends because lead thrower in Peter de Cruz's team, Valentin Tanner, is left handed. So there you can see him coming out of the left hand attack, and that's why we have both hacks in this game. But if the left hand attack is not needed, it just stays behind the ice, and that may be just for convenience or also just to keep the hacks in good condition as well. If you have stones kind of springing around, if a stone hits a hack at speed, it can damage it. So it kind of makes sense if you don't need the left hand attack, then it's nice and safe behind the ice instead. More space for the stones to spray around and not run into anything. Here we are then in this fifth end of the semi-final of the first Saddle Roden International WCT Men's Tour event. The score is 4-3 to Peter de Cruz, and he has last stone in the fifth end, so Terenzoni's team eager to start junking up the centre. Really nice shot from Jenny Perret. Jenny Perret's been world champion at mixed doubles and Olympic silver medalist at mixed doubles, so she's really experienced and very strong with this kind of join to the center game. Jenny being super sub in Terence Oni's team this weekend. Their regular lead, Melanie Barba, said she has an injury. We hope Melanie's feeling better soon. But what a replacement in Jenny Perret. She's done a super job all weekend. So remarkably, the other semi-final has actually 
all but caught us up completely after they were almost an end behind. And I can update you on the score at the halfway there. That was a, a pick up of two points to Joe Returnas in the fourth end, and that makes the scores all square. So in the semi final, Joe Returnas versus Yannick Schwammer, the score after four ends is two each. Nice shot from Essenoy and Schwander. Again, we can see this tactic of almost like the mixed doubles game, but even though De Cruz has last shot, well now they're just going to prove me wrong, you can see Stones piling up in, in front of T, just to keep Stones in play, keep moving them towards the centre, but yeah, the removing that centre guard when you don't have last shot. As I kept saying yesterday, it's rarely a bad idea. Oh, trouble there for Peter de Cruz. Savannah happy to put that back. They're happy to keep jumping up the centre and keep Peter de Cruz busy sorting out a bunch of stones on the centre line. So it's not the end of the world if de Cruz scores a one in this end, but they certainly don't want him scoring more than that. And I think ideally, they might like to score oh this end. Sounds like the line and the weight of the shot are good from everyone's perspective. Indeed they are. Well done, Esther. And copy paste for Peter de Cruz. <laughs> so both teams look pretty comfortable out there. They look like they're enjoying this game. No trouble for Peter de Cruz there. And I'm sure all the men's teams in the competition relish the opportunity to play against Sylvana's team. Like we said, we, we just don't get to see such matchups very often. And it's always fun to play a different team, to play a new team. Oddly enough, Team Totsek from Germany, they ended up playing Sylvana's team twice. And Sylvana got the win both times, so they will be quite happy if they don't have to face Tim and Zoni's team in their next competition, I think. Totsek coming off great performance in the bad Masters two weeks ago. They finished joint third with Team De Cruz. That event won by Niklas Eden. And runner-up in Baden was Jan van Dorp's team. Bien joué, says Peter. Nicely played, Silvana. Deep, lovely shot. Now they've got those three red counters ahead of T. Oh, dangerous for Peter de Cruz. De Cruz does have last shot. But those reds piling up in front of T. Two of the Reds. Uh, he's going to remove his own yellow okay. and only remove one red. So I think that sat out a little bit. That was he maybe yeah. touched that a little bit wide. So and it stayed a bit straight, didn't curl enough for them. For us here. Uh -huh. So it's only his team in a great position now in this end. I'm sure a lot of folks tuning in to this game 
because it's a draw, it's a match that we wouldn't see very often. The ladies' world champions against the men's Olympic bronze medalists. Great matchup, and I'm sure a lot of folks are really cheering for Savannah's team. People really appreciate that was a courageous decision to put themselves out there on this stage. And people really behind them and really cheering this great performance. So every inch sweeping that stone. Lovely shot there, Silvana. Well done. So even if Sven Mikael makes the double this time, there will still be that red on the left side of our screen. That's going to cause him problems so at the moment. No chance for Peter de Cruz getting two from. points out of this. And that's exactly what Tim and Sony is trying to do. They don't want to give de Cruz a chance to start building yellows. To that point then, that's switched up the tactics a little bit. So d just putting that other red stone in, that means there's not much advantage to the double takeout for Sven Mikhail. So we're switching up our thinking a bit. And they're going to draw up to those reds instead. Hopefully find a little bit of backing behind it. And get a yellow safely and try to give himself a chance at scoring two points with the last stone of this fifth end. I think he's made a pretty good fist of it. Yeah, nice shot. But Alina Pets won't mind even making the double takeout. She'll sacrifice her own red to get rid of that yellow. And her shooter will hopefully stick around in front again. So Savannah doing that little thing where people sweep the path across the house for a takeout. I've literally never seen a stone going at that sort of speed pick yeah, up and so grind to a halt in the middle of the house, but it seems to make people feel better. So big weight from Alina Peds. Ooh, I think that's over curled though, but I think it's got enough weight on it. Ooh, that yellow did put on its brakes a little bit. So unlucky, Alina. If that yellow had just rolled a wee bit further, then that shot would have been absolutely fine enough. The two reds left and right of our screen would be counted. But yeah, you can see it, it just overcurled a wee bit, so it didn't quite have enough of an angle to swing the yellow all the way out. And you can see that yellow's closer to the centre than those two reds there, and that's a pity. So now Bemar Schwartz has a chance to hit and stick, and yellow will be lined too. And again, almost out of nowhere, De Cruz may have a chance to score two in this end. Just like that. So one shot left for the Nina Pads. The double takeout is possible, but it's a difficult one. The other thing she can do is play the hit and roll. Just try to roll in front of that yellow. But it looks like she's going for the double. Silvana checking the angles, making sure she knows exactly where they want to hit this front yellow. And spring out the pair of them. This will be a great shot. So come on, Alina Pets. the line's better this time. She has got the pair of them. Good girl. 
So, really making up for not really a mistake with her first shot. It, it just curled a wee bit too much, but superb recovery from Alina Pats. Let's watch that again. She had to do it the difficult way, and no mistake there. Both yellows squirting straight out. And now De Cruz is forced to draw for one. You've got those two reds. There we see two reds either side, long way away from each other. No double takeout there for Bermar Schwartz. Okay. Doubt there'll be any problem with this. The, clean, the cleaners, the sweepers will keep it clean all the way up. And like we said, yeah, not the end of the world if De Cruz scores one, as long as they don't score more than that. And that superb double takeout with Alina Pats's last shot means there was no chance for De Cruz to score more than one. One point scored then for Peter De Cruz and that after the fifth end gives us a score in this first semi-final of 5-3. Three. three ends to come Six. in this eight-end game. Timitzoni has last shot in this sixth end. We might see them trying to manage the hammer from here. What that means is you will open two teams keen to hang on to the hammer in the even ends. Because we're playing an even number of ends, we're playing eight ends. And if Savannah can score with Hammer in this end, then yeah. Hammer, last shot, will go back to De Cruz in the seventh end. And if they score, then Savannah will have last shot in the eighth end. So it depends a little bit. They're still two points behind Savannah's team, so they still need to grab that deficit back. But there are three last stones available in the three final ends of this game and Silvana will have that in mind in terms of game management. So every stone critical now. It sounds like this is running on a wee bit. Jenny's maybe overthrown this one slightly. And it's not going to be protected by free guard zone. I think he and warmed the place up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit faster now. You think it shoots? Let's roll it! Peter De Cruz and his this is me. cheerful charter again. that nice. looked like a bit of a wobble sure, from sure. Valentino on his delivery there. I yeah, would be a bit annoyed about that. He's normally very reliable, but looks like Jenny Perrett's got away with just overthrowing that first shot, and now she'll have the chance to pick up a guard instead. Seems like the weight's better this shot. This one's not going into the house. We're giving it a good sweep to keep it moving. Nice shot, Jenny. Much better effort there. Yeah, they maybe would have wanted that to keep moving a little bit more just to try to cover more of that red. But they want guards in play. Savannah's got last stone in the sixth end. <laughs> so they need some guards in play to hide behind. <laughs> Sounds like a <laughs> gentle weight take out for the cruise. There's a nice angle for Benoit Schwartz is looking at. And indeed, no mistake from Peter de Cruz. Bravo, 
the turns only seem though can start getting a couple of reds in behind those guards out front they'll be okay. setting up nicely to score this end they would love to score two and really level the score Certainly keeping up with the Dukus who are staying in this game, but they are going to start running away soon. But they had a nicely worked two in the second end, so no reason why they can't build and do that again. This looks nice from Esther again. Just keep it moving, keep it moving. Okay, sorry. So lovely line there, you can see it just again, just a little bit shorter. Maybe the ice is going a little bit flatter. The ice is very well used on a weekend like this. There's a lot of really heavy sweeping. So it's tough on the, tough on the ice and hard for the ice technicians to keep the ice in tip-top condition. But De Cruz, anyway, wants to remove that red. So he's going to play yellow into red by the look of it. But yeah, he doesn't like that too much. That over curled. Maybe that's the half shot that Terence only needs, so <laughs> that red's still lying. Now a great opportunity to put a second one in. <laughs> in the sixth end here, we really get into the business end of this game. Every decision really important. Stone placement's going to be critical here. She just played the draw weight and it dropped a wee bitty short, so she'll have corrected that. Might just seem to hang out a little bit, that stone didn't curl so much. They haven't played so many shots out here, looks like Alina maybe thinks that they went over a Maybe a strange little patch of ice or something. But the important is that Red is now lying two. So good work from Esther Neuenschwander okay. in the sixth end here. And not so easy for De Cruz to remove both those reds. That's exactly what Tiranzoni is after. So Sven de is coming up for a bit of a check himself. Sven also, of course, has skipped at the highest level. So he's also very used to making these tactical decisions and making sure of his angles and whatnot. There's really so much experience out on the ice there. An awful lot of medals and trophies between these eight curlers. Really a treat for us viewers to watch two such decorated teams squared up against each other. And we have two not quite equally decorated, but definitely two very strong teams on the other side. We have the current European silver medalist, oh, oh, Yannick Schwaller, versus oh, the current oh, European bronze oh, medalist, oh, Sergio Trumbo. So oh, no oh, dummies oh, over there. And they have oh, a blank oh, end oh, on the fifth. Oh, oh, so oh, still oh, really tight over there. Oh, okay. yeah. oh lovely shot, Sven. That had to be really precise, really threaded the needle with that <laughs> effort. And he's left a nice yellow over there on the left of our screen that you could drive onto that red. So yeah, great result from Sven. Yeah. Let's see it again. Look at that. He has to squeak Good. through those guards by nothing at all. And he does. 
just to confirm the score on the other semi final, we are Joe Viternas from Italy, playing Yannick Schana from Switzerland, blank end in the fifth, so in their sixth end, the score is also two each. Back here in our featured game. We've really got a clash of the titans going on. We've got the current world champions in Silvana Timitzoni versus the Olympic bronze medalists in Peter de Cruz. And same discussion now for Timitzoni. You can see they've got that red already in. They want to lie two reds after this shot. Make it as hard as possible for De Cruz's team to remove both reds with one shot. And it looks like the decision is to hit and roll on this front yellow. That's a, a dangerous shot for them. De Cruz could use that yellow. I think I like this better. We could see from Sven's shot previously that's actually quite a thin gap between the ye the red guard out front there and the closer yellow guard. There's not a lot of space there. And I think I like this better. Savannah's got a lot of room to come around here on the counterclockwise handle. That was maybe one of those shots that looked quite nice when you're up in the head looking at all the stones, but when you get down to the other end, you think, hmm, doesn't look so nice from that end. In fact, we've got plenty of room to come round on this court press handle instead. But it's got to be here, girls. Come on. Yeah, I think she's mm, just about done enough. It's not quite out counting that yellow, but it is in a dangerous position. Again, difficult for De Cruz to do something about both of those red stones. No double available. So it was just about a metre, half a metre short for weight, that shot. But yeah, you can see he can't, he can't clear up both sides at once. He has to make a choice which red he goes after. And there'll still be one red left for Timmons who needs him to work with. So Sven Michael trying to punch that yellow back onto red. Stay there. Okay. Got rid of one of those reds. Yeah. And now similar discussion again for Alina and Silvana. Now you can see that again. They didn't want to touch at the sweepers. It was staying a little bit straight and they were happy for it to curl a little. And now they have a nice opportunity to hit and roll in behind plenty of cover. to score two at this end. The score is 5-3 to the Cruz at the moment. And Silvana would love to just close that gap. They're trying to sweep it for a bit of curl. So it didn't curl as much as they hoped, but again, they've still got two reds in the house, no double available, and that's the important part. Let's see if Benoit Schwartz can find a role behind cover. It looks like De Cruz is maybe taking a little touch more ice than Silvana did. So this may be coming in a little bit more gentle weight. First throw in the sixth end for fourth throw of Ben Schwartz. We're trying to get it to curl, but no, again, that's staying straight. Maybe that's a little straighter piece of ice there. So 
second chance for Terence O'Neill's team to find that hit and roll now. A lot of support out there for Savannah's team this weekend. I don't think anybody is viewing this as some kind of epic battle of the sexes, not at all. I think everyone's excited to see a real battle of the giants, actually. Both of these teams very much on top of the game. And in my opinion, especially with the five rock free guard zone, I think it's great that Savannah's team are showing that there is not much difference actually between the top men's teams and the top ladies teams. They can absolutely compete with each other. And I think we'll all remember this competition for the opportunity to watch matchups we don't get to see and also to see that yeah the top ladies teams can absolutely mix it up with the top men's teams. So come on Alina, let's find the role behind cover. So Esther again trying to sweep it for Curl and again not quite finding that Curl. And what that means, that stone with those exchanges of hits, that stone's been getting closer to the front with each hit. And what that means now is that that little yellow that Sven played a few minutes ago, that's now lying short, the one just touching the eight foot. So Valentin Tanner suggesting, yeah, why don't we just consolidate that? And put another yellow in and lie too on the counterclockwise handle. If we can get another one in, I don't think there will be an easy double for Alina Peds, but one shot to come from both teams. This is the last shot in the sixth end for Peter de Cruz. Again, important discussion where the this stone to land. Famous team from the Geneva Club. Kind of been everywhere, done everything. Looks like that is the decision: is to put a second yellow in on the counterclockwise handle. And then I don't think there will be a, a shot available for Terence Oni's team to make two points. They may end up having to make a difficult shot for one point. with Stephanie in the chat that a tournament with the top women's teams competing against the top men's would be so much fun, definitely. And yeah, who knows, maybe this competition could be a bit of a pioneer for that sort of thing. I'm not sure how that would affect the, the points gathering and whatnot for Olympics and World Championship events and so on, but yeah, we're certainly all very much enjoying this line up this weekend. <laughs> Another nice shot from Ben Rushworth there. Then it went back. Really nice shot, actually. That's great stone placement. Hmm. So, indeed, I think this is a tough shot even just to get one. I think they're looking to see if there's any possibility huh? of removing both the yellows. But yeah, this is a tricky shot now, even just to get one. They haven't done too much wrong this end to its own east team. Just really nice placement. They didn't quite find the roll ah, from that stone near where Sylvana's standing. And 
lovely final sh shot placement from Ben Lash Schwartz has put quite a lot of pressure now on Lena Pitts. Come on, Alina. Tough shot to make one here. That's got plenty of energy on its own. Ooh, has she just squirted it in? I think she might have. Oui. Uh, Peter de Cruz taking a good look at it. I think that was one red. So we'll take that. Yeah, there you can see the club room a bit empty today. Normally, I'm sure there would be a lot of supporters in, but we've got special restrictions in place in the competition. The players are really the priority. We appreciate all the teams, all 16 teams, who put themselves out there this weekend. It's still not back to normal here in Europe, so that's why we've still got some there confirmed one red. Great save from Alina Pets again. But yeah, we've still got some restrictions in place here in Europe. And we're maintaining strict separation between the players and everyone else. And the priority is not to expose the players to too many people. So that's why there's not too many live supporters. That sounds a bit weird. That's why there's not too many supporters here at the club. <laughs> I'm sure all our supporters are live in some way. But yeah, we're all watching here in the the virtual curling club. And looks like a big following for this game. People really excited to see this clash of the titans that we don't get to see very often. Another nice start from Jenny Perrett. Every stone now critical. Two ends left, including this one. The score is 5 4 to the Cruz. And the Cruz has last shot in the seventh end, so it's going to be aggressive stones all the way now for Terenzoni's team. They will want to try to score this end and then score again at the eighth end, so I guess their strategy will be to try to steal one here in the seventh and then steal one more in the eighth for the win. So pretty difficult stuff, but these are the world champions. Jenny Perret, world champion from mixed doubles from 2017. And she and Martin Rios, her partner in the mixed doubles, they represented Switzerland at the 2018 Olympics for mixed doubles, winning silver medals there. And both of these teams, Chimensoni and Peter de Cruz, these were the Swiss representatives in the men's and ladies at the Olympics as well. So really a wealth of experience out there. That's why this is really a fascinating lineup. And confirmation there of what's going on in the other semi-final. Return as the only foreign team left in the competition. The well-known Italian team, they are the current European bronze medalists and Schwaller, the current European silver medalists. So, pretty tough matchup over there as well. And as you would expect, everything very tight. And they're also in their seventh end. Sorry, no, they're just finishing their sixth end. And the score is two each. So both these games very finely poised as we would expect for the semi-final stage of this Adelboden International. So, summon your brains to Insulini's team. Let's make a good decision on every shot here. Yeah, 
It sounds like they're discussing whether to go for the double take out here on the yellows, which looks possible. Hester would be perfectly comfortable with that. Yeah, let's go and have a chat. Every decision is important. Let's make sure we're getting it right. And I think the other option is to just push that yellow back, not at takeout weight. Yeah, as Havana's indicating, just push that yellow behind T. And then you will have a red ahead of T and start to get control of that <laughs> area ahead <laughs> of the T line. Oh, hell. Come here. So don't take too long, guys. I think huh? if there's too much chitter chatter, I think that can disturb the your playing rhythm and the, the flow of your game. So definitely make sure you're making the right decision, but do in fact get on with it. As we said earlier, Alina Pats has been world champion twice with this team, current world mm. champions, and a skip a few years ago. Uh, their first time of asking, yeah. so it's always worth listening to what Alina thinks as well. And it's Esther who's going to throw, so she's having a bit of a look, see what she's comfortable with as well. Okay. And I can update you on the other semi-final. They are now also in their seventh end. And that was a big steal of two for Returnas in the sixth end. And that makes the score after six ends, 4-2 to Team Returnas. The Italians also a really difficult team to beat. They're, they're really fighters. And they're not intimidated by any of the teams out here. As I've said, they're European bronze medalists. Yeah, that's a very difficult team to get past. Unbeaten so far this weekend, Joel's team. They beat the Young Hoosley team on a measure last night. So, after all that chatter, I'm not sure that's quite what they wanted, but they've moved okay. one of the yellows. I think important was they wanted that red to hang around though, because as you can see now, the free guard zone is over, and the crews can start removing those guards, and Timotoni really needs those guards out front. And that would have really helped them out if that red had stuck around. That would have really helped them out in terms of setting up the end for a steal. Yeah, I see no trouble for Peter de Cruz, so now... Situation not looking so helpful for Sylvana's team. This isn't a bad idea, so having lost their, their cover, so that shot, the previous shot there didn't quite work out, the red rolled out, and that gave De Cruz the chance to just remove all the guards from play. So nothing to guard, and this strategy might make sense, just to, from here, keep the seventh end clean. See what Cruz does. Either if he wants to score a one point with his last shot. Oh, but that's a no, 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 no. costly miss. Whoops. I'm not sure what happened to that. If it was maybe not enough ice, or she maybe just touched it a little bit inside as she released it. But oh gosh, that was after some. Super stones, really solid play in this game and all weekend. Esther had just a bit of a wobble this end in the seventh end of the semi final. Not panic stations yet, but looking a little bit precarious for Timotoni's team. Nice 
Okay, shot from Peter de Cruz. Just Run wanted there. to indeed Finish split on. those stones, <laughs> try and put some distance between them, try and make sure there isn't an easy double takeout yeah. for Silvana. So we're going for the hit and roll across here. The two losers from these games, their competition will be finished, but they will have a nice consolation of 500 francs prize money. So yes, no in the sweeping, normally quite good. Not much of a roll, but we move one of them. Our quarter finalists last night, they also had a losing quarter finalists. They had a consolation of 300 francs prize money. The losing finalists, they will get 300 francs prize money. And the winner will get 1,200 francs prize money. So all these teams at least winning their entry money back. That's always nice. But they won't be thinking about that just now. All four of these teams really want to win, so same kind of shot for Silvana. to get a bit more of a roll on this one. <laughs> Sounds like they may be sweeping it to encourage it to curl a wee bit more. So she got a little bit more curl, Maybe but not too much. So similar kind of situation. Lots of stones in play over in the other semi final, also in their yeah. seventh end. So, four stones to come in our featured game. The semi final of the Adelboden International. Again, important decisions here. If De Cruz can score two in this end, that would make the score 7 4, and getting a three in the last end is quite a big task. So I think uh, the, the angle for the double has been improving as that stone at the side has moved towards the front and we've seen Alina Peds make a gorgeous double in the fifth end let's see if she can do it again here looking good says Peter de Cruz and it is it's another tasty double for Alina Pets, great shot there. That's really got our team out of trouble. And she's already going back down the rink. I think this end will play out fairly straightforwardly. Look at this again. We just can't get enough of watching Alina Pets play lovely across the house doubles. <laughs> That certainly neutralised the danger. Easy, easy, easy. De Cruz being able to pick up two points for now. Really important shot there from Alina Peds. That could be the shot that keeps them in this game. No trouble for Ben Marshwards.
Just a single take out for Alina with her final stone in this end. And then my guess is that Ben Marshforts will hit and roll out with his last shot. But first things first, this yellow has to leave the house. Super's keeping it clean all the way. We don't want some bad luck. Ruining such a lovely game. So Alina's partner Spain probably again just seeing great double take out there. Indeed it was. One red lying and my guess is Peter de Cruz is not interested in picking up one point here. He would rather stay plus one point and hang on to last shot in the eighth end. Therefore, Ben Marshforts will be throwing a big weight at this to make sure the red goes and his yellow stone goes out as well. No mistake there. So after, I think, a real game saver from Alina Pets, if Peter de Cruz had managed to score two in this end, I think it would have been a bit of a hill to climb for Terenzoni's team. So a real game saving shot from Alina Pets and the score remains 5-4 after seven ends. So come on, Jenny Perret, two hmm? nice guards to start off this eighth end. So Terenzoni's team needs to steal one. They don't have last shot in this eighth end. They need to steal one, and that would take us to an extra end. And you can see there have been no steals so far in this game. So tricky stuff to score without last shot so far in this game. Great start from Jenny Pernet. That guard nice and close to the house, but protected by the free guard zone. And Peter de Cruz, of course, is trying to do the opposite. He doesn't want stones in the centre. He would love to have a nice open space for his last stone in this eighth end. So he's asking Valentin Tanner for the tick shot. They want to yeah, move yeah. that red continue, off continue, the centre line, but not out of play. Go, 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 go. Continue, 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 continue. Ah. And Sylvana's going to try to sweep her own stone out of play. If she did manage to sweep it out of play, she could put it back. But that was an excellent effort from Valentin Tani. You can see that red is still in play, but it's basically useless now. It's behind T, it's in that far corner. <laughs> But he didn't get so much of a roll with his own yellow, so that yellow could still be helpful for Tim and Sony's team. Jenny Perrett will be doing the same kind of idea. Sounds like the weight is good. They want it to land just where Sylvana's brush is. And it does perfect shot, Jenny. So 100% for Jenny Perrett in this eighth end. She's done all she can. <coughs> and Cruz asking Valentin Tanner for same kind of shot. Try to move that red off the line, but not out of play. Valentin Tanner and Peter Cruz played together for years and years since juniors. He's certainly caught an edge of it. And that's two <laughs> fine shots from Valentin Tanner. Yeah. That's given Peter de Cruz's team a real boost for this eighth end. If you can make those two shots, those two tick shots, that puts you in a great position to give yourself a chance at winning this game from here. But Terenzoni team, their champions. Don't know what to do. They need to keep persisting with putting guards up. 
there are still stools out front. You can see there are those two yellows that if you tied behind. But okay, this isn't it at all. Oh dear, I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. Maybe they were directly trying to go in behind those yellow guards, but that's sailed on past T. That's unlikely to help so Tennant's own East team. And this is exactly the right call from Ben Lashford's. Remove their own stones from play. They don't want stones at all out front. Stones out front only helps Timmons only. This may be not a shot we see too often, removing your own stones, but this is exactly the right call. Any stones out front are helpful to Timmons only's team. So he gets rid of the, the most dangerous one. There's still one hanging about, but I wouldn't expect that to be too important in the final huh? analysis. So Sylvana got no choice to got to persist with huh? playing towards the center line. Valentin Tanner has made the task that bit harder with two beauties with his two shots. They will fight to the last stone. That's nice from Esther. That makes sense to keep Jacuz busy with guards out front for a while. And um, unlikely to get a complete miss, but they may get a half shot and the stone ends up maybe not clearing out completely. Okay. Okay, up, yeah. oh. Good. Nah, right. I think they're pretty comfortable with that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no news from the other semi final. They're still in their seventh end, and it looks like at the moment, I think about 14 stones in play over there. All rather complicated. <laughs> Necessitating quite a lot of indicating with brushes and looking at angles and whatnot. We'll update what's going on over there as soon as we have news. But here in our featured game, we're in the eighth and final end of the semi final. First shot in the eighth end for Savannah 2 and Sony. They need to score one, they need to steal one without last shot to take this game to an extra end. So pretty much just putting okay. that stone back. De Cruz is just going to remove it. But there's always a chance. You can see there are three guards hanging around on the wings there. And there's always a chance it might catch one of those in the way past. De Cruz is aware of that. That's yeah, why yeah, yeah. Timmons team are going for the placement where they are. So uh, like that, it did catch one of those stones, but yeah, it could catch and bounce again towards centre. Well, actually, that's a really nice shot from Sven Mikhail. Really he not yeah. only removed the centre guard, but we'll see it again here. He also removed <laughs> that yellow corner guard. So bonus point for Sven Mikhail for that shot. From the fall in the Peter Dukou is still trying to distract the ladies with his friendly chatter. I'm just teasing. Peter Dukou is a lovely person. It's always nice. Now at some point, Terence Sony's team are going to have to switch this up a little bit. De Cruz is quite happy to keep removing these guards. And you can see that shot from Esther a few minutes ago. That's in the back eight right. foot. And they won't be expecting that that will be enough to win them the game to, to steal the end from De Cruz. No trouble for Sven. 
Oh, indeed. Oh. Just gets another couple to prove yeah. it wasn't a fluke the first time. No, so, yeah, that we're going to have to start thinking this through to the end now. That redstone's not close enough to the centre that they can expect it to put enough pressure on Benmar Schwartz's last stones. First stone for fourth floor Alina Pets in this semi final. And Ben Schwartz will happily remove this. And like we said, Valentin Tanner's two beautiful first shots that really made Terence life pretty difficult in this eighth yeah, end. Again, th they haven't done a lot wrong, Terence Oney's team. Even though that red in the rings is a little bit deep, they haven't done too much wrong. It's just those two great tick shots from Valentin Tanner it makes it very difficult to generate offense if your guards have gone. So, just where Alina's pointing to. We're going to have to come into the house with this one, otherwise we'll leave Ben Schwartz with a pretty straightforward shot for the win. Still in the seventh end, over on the other semi-final. I think there are now about 14 stones in play by the look of it. Doing the right thing, Sylvanas team. As I said, they haven't done a lot wrong in this end. And they're giving themselves basically the only chance they can. They need a mistake from Ben Marshforts if they were ever going to score this end anyway. So let's put as much pressure on them as we can. So Lena Pets going for top of the four foot circle. They want it to land just where Sylvanas brushes. Yeah. Looks pretty nice. So it's coming up a wee bit short. So Ben Rush for it. Draw to I guess the eight foot, yeah. Mm. Touching four foot would be plenty. No, we see me. Savannah's team really done all they can in this end. They are lying too red. <laughs> if Ben Rashford somehow comes out and falls over for the first time in his life, then Tennant's only team have given themselves the best chance they can. But I would be pretty surprised if there's any mistake from Ben Rashford's here. Nino okay. Your fourth floor at this level. That's exactly what you're there for, is to draw the four foot with the last stone of a game. So just keeping it clean all the way. I think it's fine by itself. Savannah's going to give it a go, see if she can get it to move past, but not quite. So great shot to finish from Ben Schwartz. And Super game for us to watch here. Timothy's team <laughs> getting all the way to the semi final and only being knocked out by two superb shots from Valentin Tanner and a nice tidy final draw from the ever reliable Ben Rashford. 
Congratulations to Peter de Cruz's team making the final of the first Adelboden International and big congratulations to Silvana Terenzoni's team for giving us such great games. Brave decision to say yes to play in this team, uh, sorry, to play in this competition. And the only games they lost were this one on the last shot. And their very first game to other semi finals Janet Schaller also on the very last shot. So I think that's shown all of us that these top ladies teams are absolutely able to mix it up with the top men's teams. And I know a lot of support out there for Sylvana's team. A lot of folks really happy to see them perform so well in this competition. Some sad faces out there in the chat. Me too. I would have loved to see Sylvana win that game. Not because we don't like Peter de Cruz, we certainly do. But I'm happy it was such a strong game. So this shot, nothing to do with the game we've just seen. This is Ben Marshall's drawing to decide last shot in the final. I know Tooms has been a strong supporter of Sylvanas team all weekend. And Samson in Brazil also a bit sad to say goodbye to Team Tumentzoni. I'm sure Ben Schwartz will be a bit disappointed that you can still see the hole after that shot. I think, yeah, that must be a good two centimetres away from the hole there. But that will certainly put a bit of pressure on whoever's going to win the other semi final. So, confirmation there of this super semi final. A lot of fun to watch. At the very last stone, final score of 6 4 for. Peter de Cruz over Silvana Terenzoni's team. And they have now finished the seventh end over in the other game. That was a score of one to Yannick Schwaller. So in our other semi-final, they're about to start their eighth end. The score is 4-3 to Returnaz, and Returnaz has last shot in this eighth end. So Advantage Italy a little bit. But again, Schwaller's team, they're champions, so they'll still fancy their chance to steal this end, to take it to an extra end over there. How oh, nice to see Jez again. Hope you had a nice evening out, Jez. You, you missed some fun stuff in the quarterfinals, but yeah, this was a great game to watch this morning. You can rewatch all the games from this weekend on the WCT TV YouTube channel. And of course, we will be live streaming the final at 1.30 European time. Team Peter de Cruz already booked their place in the final and they will be playing either Joe Returnas of Italy or Yannick Schwaller of Switzerland. So oh, we can Scoot across and watch the last end. Very cool. I'm sure De Cruz will be paying attention to who's winning this game. So you can see same tactic being tried here by Italy. That tick shot just to move the centre guard off the line. And I think whichever team triumphs in this semi-final, I think we shall have a really super final, so Schwaller and de Cruz. Schwaller has very much been catching up with the de Cruz team here in Switzerland. As we said, the Schwaller is the current silver medalist at European. That was the first time they played at Europeans and they went all the way to win the silver medal. So very much catching up with de Cruz. De Cruz not the only top team in town in Switzerland anymore. And there's, I tell you, there's a whole bunch of Slightly younger teams snapping at their heels as well. And the ever-reliable Joe Return as his team from Italy, current bronze medalists at European. They've been in this situation a million times as well. Very difficult to beat this Italian team. They're a very comfortable team. 
they've been working hard for many years now these four players they've played together a long time they've experimented with slightly different lineups slightly different throwing orders and they settled on this one and it's really really working for them so lead thrower Simone Gonin two great efforts to move those reds off the center line very similar situation, in fact, almost identical situation to what we had in our featured game. So in our featured game, De Cruz was plus one with Hammer, trying to keep the centre clear. And in this other semi-final, Joe Returnas is plus one with Hammer and trying to keep the centre clear. We may see a very similar kind of end playing out here. And indeed we are, even to the extent that this stone from Romana Meyer is running a little bit high and over T. So Joel's hugely experienced skip. He always knows what he's doing. Joel has played at the uh, Olympics in 2006, I think it was. Not with this team, a slightly different team. But yeah, been successful at the highest level for a long time. Uh, plenty beans on that shot from second thrower Sebastiano Arman. So Romano Meyer will get another chance to sink a shot in behind those two red guards. sweepers are staying away from it again though I think it looks slightly better for weight no it's not that's going to run on as well it is a slightly better line though To remind you, the final at 1.30 European time, we'll be live streaming that. Peter de Cruz's team already booked their place. And we're about five or six stones away from finding out who their opposition will be. Joel Returnaz's Italian team playing yellow stones. They are plus one and they have last stone in this eighth end. If, though, the score is tied after these eight ends, if Schwaller manages to pick up a point, if the score is tied, we will play one extra end. And if somehow that extra end is blanked, it can happen, then there would be a sudden death last shot draw. So one stone each for both teams to decide the winner. This red's going to land fairly close to the other one. And maybe leave a nice chance for a double takeout. Remove everything from the house. But that front red's the one that's dangerous, so that's the one that has to go. Yep, Joel's indicating the doubles there. Third thrower. Amos Mozana, he's got a huge throw on him. You can see this one coming in a rocket piece. So he gets the front one, that was a dangerous shot. Doesn't quite get the double. And Joel's still chasing that shooter. It was going at such a pace. 
Yeah, you can see how tall Hosanna is. He's got big levers and he can't half throw a big takeout. And even if we have an extra end in this game, both the teams playing the final will have almost a couple of hours pause in between to have a rest, get something to eat. A lot of games played this weekend. Important to keep the energy levels up. So this looks a bit better. That's not quite as close. No double, well, a very difficult double available. So again, Joel just concentrating on removing that dangerous stone. He'll gladly take the double, but rather keep life simple. Let's go for the simple guard removal rather than the extravagant takeout. And again, everyone chasing stones all over the ice hall. After that, big takeout from Amos Mazana. First stone here then from Yannick Schvaller in this eighth end. Four stones to come, two each, including this one. I think Schwaller will be quite happy to persist with this tactic of covering the centre. And then what he will end up doing is forcing Joe Returnas to draw to the forefoot with his last shot. So I think, yeah, this is roughly the situation that we see right now. Joe will certainly remove that guard. Yannick will put it back and he will try to force Joe Returnas to draw to the forefoot for the game. And as we keep saying, that's what your fourth throw is there for at this level. That's exactly what you expect to have to do is draw the forefoot to win the game with the last shot in the eighth end. First things first, let's get rid of this guard. Oh my goodness, that's not what we expected. So Schwaller can now make Joel's life a little bit harder. So now he's got the chance to block that path to the forefoot. That's very uncharacteristic from Joel. Maybe just a bit of a rush of excitement here in this final end of the semi-final. Michael Brunner pointing to where they want their shot to end up. It doesn't really change Joel's final shot. It just might make it a little bit harder. But yeah, that most uncharacteristic. So big shot here from Yannick Schwaller a chance to put a lot of pressure on. Super straight on it, but it looks like they're fairly happy with it. The sweepers will decide the weight. And I think this is running a wee bit high as well. I think this is going to end up behind T. It is, ooh, so a half shot there from Yannick Schwaller as well. They are lying too red. If this shot is a disaster and Yannick scores too red, then they can win the game at this point. But not quite punishing Joel for that previous miss there. And now Joel has the whole forefoot really and even a little bit of backing to make sure that he gets this stone right in the forefoot. He's been in this situation loads of times. This is his job, to draw the forefoot to win the game. Simon Simone Gonen, the 
Vaiskip for the Italian team. He'll be watching the line. So again, the sweeper's right on it, but seemed quite happy. I don't think it needs to wait for weight, boys. They're all standing back. Is that going to stop? Oh, Joel. Oh, dear. So, smashing a bit of defeat from the jaws of victory there, the Italians. And I think probably a bit of a surpri surprise there for Schwaller that they stole that victory right at the end there. And there you can see Amos frustrated with that one, yeah. They got all the way to the last shot. And again, just that 10 centimetres makes all the difference. So Schwaller's team gave themselves the chance to win. And look, that was all they could do. Make sure they were lying too red when Joel came to play his last shot. And that was enough for them. So congratulations, Team Schwaller. We now have our second team for this afternoon's final. So it will be an all-Swiss affair. The two real giants of Swiss curling. We have the current European silver medalists, Yannick Schwaller's team against the current Olympic bronze medalists, Peter de Cruz. So that promises to be an excellent match this afternoon. Those two teams know each other's game really well. That likely to be a really tight affair. So do come back in two hours and join us for the live stream of the final here. That's at 1.30 European. And thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Bye for now.